I just use it for my main form of transportation. It's the most usual one and I kind of figure it's my body is fairly sustainable, <laughs> sustained by organic food, local food, and then I use the energy to pedal around rather than having to use fossil fuel in a vehicle. In our home here in Kamloops, we have geothermal heating and cooling, so okay. we use that a fair bit of the time. And we don't have any other backup. Right, no, okay. It's just that, yeah. My family, first of all my parents, because being immigrants from Europe, my father was Danish, my mother was English, but we lived on a farm, the same farm. I grew up there. They Soldiers. didn't have much money, and until I was five actually, we didn't have a vehicle. My dad had a tractor for the farm, and he could borrow the truck from the mill that he had to work at until he got the farm going. But um, otherwise, we, we would walk into Chase. My mom was used to walking in England. She, she'd never had a driver's license. We just lived very sustainably. Recycling is nothing to me. First of all, nothing much to recycle. Right. We right. always had compost. We went to the dump maybe twice a year with the very few tin cans or something. So I would say that my parents got me started and I didn't have to learn all these things. I just always did them. And then, and then my children are, were a great motivator, particularly for things like cycling, because I wanted to be an example. When I first learned about climate change 20-something years ago, I thought, what can I do? Well, I can ride my bike. Of course, now my two granddaughters are my motivators, because <laughs> they're going to be here in the future and have right. to deal with what we're doing now. There have been individuals too, for instance there was a woman, Andrea, somebody who uh, when when some of us, and it was, I have to say it was mainly women both in Chase, we had some recycling going, and then there were women in Kamloops, Leslie Tucker was one of them, and they brought in this woman from the coast to talk about recycling and she just totally made me think uh, she had been driving to a parent meeting at school one day and she'd stopped to get coffee and she thought there's this is one of so many cups that are going to get thrown away I'm just going to not do this anymore and so there she was doing her speech with a nice china cup and I thought okay I'm not I'm not going to use anything that gets thrown away anymore and that's what I do I just if I don't have my own cup with me for coffee if I go somewhere or a, a plate I, I just don't have it and then it makes me remember for next time yeah well a friend of mine <laughs> said the same basic thing with shopping bags oh yeah so we'd get yeah. to a store he'd be like yeah. oh i forgot my bags so we'd actually make it a sort of a competition to see how much he could get home in his pockets oh, yeah. or just carrying you know without so he wouldn't get the plastic bag and that would be a good motivator to remember to bring it mm -hmm. next time if i was shopping i always took a basket baskets were great they're way better than bags but with the bike um, i don't have to worry about it because i always have my bike bags well one of the most difficult things is transportation i find um, you know in my younger days i actually traveled a lot and i think that was another uh, Another reason why I, I want to live more sustainably because I've, I've spent almost a year in Africa and I've seen how other people have to live and, uh, and uh, it make, I mean we're all in this together and so we, our standard needs to go down a lot because everybody, all seven and a half billion of us can't be living at the same standard we are and uh, so um, I'm sort of getting off track here a little bit but um, I, I just you know, I just felt that I have to live more simply, and uh, yeah, so that was, you know, right. why I made some of my changes, and some of those people inspired me, the people whose names I don't even know, right. obviously. So as far as challenges, you talk about transportation. Yeah, well, the tra you know, and, and I did, snow I, and well, I did, and no, 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 but I mean, I did fly in those days, but it was right. before, this is, I'm talking about the 70s, and it was before right. scientists were already thinking about it, but it wasn't widely known. I, I, I would be in the 80s when I started to realize about it. And since then, I have not traveled. Um, if you read books like How to Live a Low Carbon Life mm -hmm. by Chris Goodall, what you, the best ways to have a smaller footprint are to um, eat local organic food in particular mm. and not fly. Right. And George Mumbai says love miles add up. So I try not to fly. Um, for instance, when my daughter was in Montreal, I either went by bus or by train, oh, right. which is a lot longer. But it's a it's a much more ni it's a much nicer way to travel oh, too right. if you have enough time. Really, right. the travel is the difficult one because almost everything else you can you can, I think you can deal with re reasonably simply if you just think about it and 
are willing to not have a huge house or not be able to jump in your car and you know it it, it just takes a little bit more planning even getting from chase to Kamloops without a vehicle because for six seven years I, I didn't own a vehicle right. and um, there are a couple of little community buses and lots of people going back and forth and you can easily do it right. Right. and where I live I can I mostly ride my bike and if the winter if it's too snowy I just walk and I totally understand that not everybody can do that, but I think a lot more people could than right. do, right? One is to eat local organic food, right. and some people would say, well, organic food's too expensive, but it's really not. You're getting a lot more nutrition and, and uh, probably less calories, which is healthier than if you're buying a larger amount of food that's been packaged from who knows where. Sure. So that would be one of the first things I say, or at least locally, if you can't, if you can't find organic food, and you can, I mean, even people in apartments can grow an amazing amount of food on their balconies, and um, you can do sprouts right in your kitchen if you don't even have a balcony. So there are so many things to do like that. And the other action is to avoid flying. I mean, there's, there's so many places in BC to visit. You don't have to go flying to other parts of the world. And then there's small things you can do hanging out your washing. We always grew up with a clothesline. That, I mean, that's what you did. I have a friend who says, you know, there's a generation, she said this some years ago, now there's two generations at least, of ch kids who don't know what it's like to put their head on a pillow that's been hanging right. outside. <laughs> All they know is something that, you know, smells of some Chemical. awful... <laughs> It, you know, even if you can't have a clothesline, if you have a backyard, you can have an umbrella one. And in an apartment, you can have a, a foldable rack to, to hang up your clothes. So, because apparently clothes dryers are one of the really high use um, energy well, know, uh, appliances. So that's one right Statistically, there. in BC, they use 6% of hydro. That's interesting. Six. Yeah. See, and we don't, we don't have one at the farm. We got rid of it some years ago right. and we hang most in the summer, of course, we hang it outside. Otherwise, we have a, a rack that my dad, that we had when we were kids, oh, and my dad had built this wooden rack that okay. you would lower and raise on a pulley. Oh, and, I, right. and you know, if you have a basement, you can easily do that, or you just put up a couple of lines or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Neat. not hard. Yeah. Okay. Uh, those, those are, those are small, easy things that I think anybody can do. And yes, it takes maybe a bit longer than throwing the clothes in the dryer, but. Um, they don't come out all staticky if you hang That's them up right, on the line, right? right? right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I didn't start doing things to have an impact on the community. It was a case of you know, as an individual, what can I do? And there were certain things that I could do, and that's uh, that's all anybody can do really is their own. Right. I mean, I would hope and I think it's I think I was an example to my kids because they're all, they're all pretty environmental and for instance my daughter in Montreal she never had a vehicle she had a bike and used public transportation um, Donovan goes everywhere by bike only he had a truck for a while for his business I've gone in a lot of walks and demonstrations and been a part of a lot of group, especially now that I'm retired, um, I can do that. My time is my own. I'm as busy as ever. There's so much to do everywhere. And I'm thinking that I'm going to have to do that even more in the future. We'll see how things pan out with, you know, some of these projects that have been approved. And I think there is an impact when people do stand up and say no or let's change. Then other people take notice. That famous quote by Margaret Mead. Margaret yeah, Mead, yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. What a Can small. change the world, indeed. I mean, it's it's the only thing it ever has. Yeah, no, no, that's, I, I've paid a lot of attention to that. Yeah. yeah. Well, when the straw bale studio at the farm is uh, completely finished, it's very near to being finished, then I'll be living there a lot more. It's a very sustainable building because uh, the only new item that was purchased was a, a pool liner to go on the roof to make sure it was waterproof. Oh, right. But other than that, all the materials were local. The furthest away that anything came was the straw bales from Enderby because they had a really low moisture content, which okay. was important. Right. But the rock was from when they were widening up at Chase Creek. The sand and gravel was just across the highway. There's some clay from the river and some from up near Solista. But almost everything, um, and the, the windows are re from the restore. But it, it's like a you know one room area, and okay. I plan to 
possibly put my potter's wheel in there and I'll, I'll be spending a lot of time in Great. that. So that'll be a really sustainable building. Other than that, I seldom buy new things. I mean, I go to thrift stores a lot, but not because things are more reasonable, but because I like the idea of recycling things right. rather than buying something new. I'm a terrible consumer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you you're an awesome consumer. <laughs> It's amazing what you can find at garage sales. I, I don't think I do, really. It's a lot of, uh, as I said, unknown people. There are people like um, Vandana Shiva, who has uh, you know, spoken out a lot uh, about the food systems of the world, mm. because the way the industrial food systems, I think it's about a third of the carbon emissions are created by our mm. current food systems right. through you know, transport and through the manufacture of pesticides. One is live simply that others may simply live. Mm -hmm. And I heard that a while ago and I just saw it on a young guy's van the other day too. Mm -hmm. And that's one of, that really struck me when I heard about it. Mm -hmm. And it's one of the things that I've always thought about since. And mm -hmm. I really think that um, instead of ever trying to raise everybody up to our ridiculous standard of living, <laughs> we should all be living more simply and it, there's a lot more enjoyment in living simply if people only realized it too mm. you know for instance riding my bike is way more fun <laughs> right than, than being trapped inside a car where you can't really relate to other people at all right. um right. yeah i whenever i'm on my bike i say hi to everybody the, right. the other cyclists and the people i meet yeah and another saying is support local organic farmers Right, right and we right. have to do that. Right. Another one is everything comes from the earth and must return to the earth, and this is why, like to me, recycling is not even. It's it's really low down. We should be reusing, or we should not even be purchasing it in the first or reducing. getting it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just reducing is so much more uh, important. My parents they didn't buy much because they couldn't, but they would save up and buy something that they expected to last and for instance these chairs that we're sitting on these okay. are chairs from my parents okay. home okay. and they got recovered the seat my brother did that I think some years ago and that's what people did of course in right. the all through, up through the Middle Ages, the furniture and all these beautiful things. There's still less. Yeah, still instead of just buying all this stuff that falls apart in two years. Yeah. Oh, everyone has a bit of the truth which is kind of general too but I also think I think I'm right about a lot of things, but I know other people have slightly different opinions and mm. we have to remember that all the time. We can't be thinking, you know, it's just my way. And that we have all the answers. Yeah, and, yeah. and it's all the interconnectedness of, of everything. And then another one I didn't want to forget was, um, oh, this is the basic one of think globally, act locally. So Can you hold up your note sheet there? Oh, right. Yeah, <laughs> this is, well, I mean, I just recycle everything. So this is my uh, rooibos chai tea. Um, tea fair, packet. It's fair trade organic. <laughs> I eat local organic, but there are exceptions. And I, I don't expect anybody else to totally, yeah. But if I do buy something like, I consider it a luxury to have tea or coffee or um, bananas. I, my children probably thought I was mean, but I would say, no, no, bananas, they're a treat. We can't grow bananas <laughs> in BC. <laughs> so we have them once in a while for a treat, but we, most of the time we eat apples. Right, right, right. And uh, yeah, so I, uh, yeah, so I just recycle everything and makes a nice note paper. For sure, for sure. I, don't, I mean, I don't think I bought a new piece of paper for years. <laughs> right, right. I recycle envelopes. You know, one of the best little blurbs that I think brings home to people, and I th it should still be available on online, is the story of stuff. Oh yes, no, it's a good one. Uh, because it goes through the whole life cycle of, right. of everything and it, it really brings home how, uh, you know, where all the energy is used all the way along the way. Right. Don't get me started on bottled water. 